You are now tuned in to the Next Dimension University broadcast. Come out of the Godnosphere and experience the next dimension in destiny with us. Be empowered and educated through any of the 61 and growing ministry career fields. We are a school of purpose. We are a school of destiny. We are poised and ready to prepare, equip, empower, and deploy you into your kingdom assignment. We are the lowest cost, fully accredited Bible college in Southern California today. And now, join us as your destiny began. Well, we're excited to be here at Next Dimension University. Oh my God, and you are blessed and privileged to be an honorary student in class. And we're, you know, there's no pomp and circumstance here. There's no form and fashion. We're just going to be learning the Bible together in, a, in an environment that's conducive to learning. We call it the Godmosphere. It is an atmosphere that God is completely and utterly control, controlling. And uh, we're submitted to that environment, is conducive to learning the Word of God. Uh, the supernatural is at work. Um, you're turning off your natural mind, if you will, because the natural mind receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, neither can it know them because they are spiritually discerned, spiritually deciphered. So we are encouraging you to put on your spiritual catchers, your ear gate. We're encouraging you to pay attention to the wooing and to the massaging of the Holy Ghost right there where you sit. And uh, we're encouraging you and admonishing you to put your pen to parchment, uh, to ink what you think, to put it down where it may be found so that you're ultimately able to sprint with the blueprint. So put it down, okay? Write, document these things because the Holy Ghost is going to hold you accountable to these things that you hear, okay? And so uh, right now we're preparing leaders for end-time deployment. We're producing master teachers, and you're on board to be a master teacher for 2016. That's the assignment that's upon me as a primary, the primary steward of Next Dimension University, and to our faculty and staff, we are here to prepare you to be master students, to be deployed into regions, to bring the same anointing and the same grace onto others, amen, as we're discipling others. We've got the truth, so we should not allow the cults and the counter-Christian groups to do better with their lie than we do with the truth. Amen? As that, if that's the truth, give God a great big hand of applause here at Next Dimension University. We're excited to be part of this movement. We're excited to be Bible waggers, Bible toters. We're excited to have our Bibles visible because it's not about somebody's philosophy book. It's not about Aristotle. It's not about Socrates. It's not about Plato. It's not about Josephus even. It's not about great scholars. It's about the Bible. And uh, it's about Jesus. And it's about Paul. And it's about it is written. And we want to know what has been written because we want to build Build our spiritual treasure chest with scriptures in the word of God. So in that given moment, Luke 12 and 12, the Holy Ghost will give us supernatural recall to bring it out in a small evangelistic setting or in a teaching setting or in a Sunday school setting or when we're out in uh, deserted areas and uh, we're bringing the apostolic and the prophetic to a region that is deserted. We need the word of God coming out of our mouth with accuracy. And so if you're in agreement with that, give God another great big hand of applause today. So today, we're, I, I like this subject in particular is pneumatology. Pneumatology, not cosmetology, <laughs> women. <laughs> okay. It's pneuma. Pneuma like breath, like, like spirit, like wind, okay? The breath, the wind. Are you hearing me today? That's what pneuma implies. Ology, the study of. The study of the spirit. Everybody say the study of the spirit. So we're studying the spirit. We're studying the operation of the Holy Ghost. Now, we use Holy Ghost sometimes, and then other times we use Holy Spirit. He said, Dr. McLeod, what's the difference? The difference is two different schools, okay? Because, you know, King James recruited scholars and translators from Cambridge, Oxford, and Westminster to translate the Bible into his language. And one translator said spirit. The other said, one school said spirit. The other one said Holy Ghost. It's to tell somebody it's the same thing. 
But over time, you will find that the more conservative churches and conservative denomination don't want to get excited about Holy Ghost because we don't know about them Holy Rollers and what they're going to do. I, that's too spooky for me. So, but we're okay with Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, he's a wonderful presence. The Holy Spirit. But, you know, those of you that are Pentecostal, Protestant, fundamentalist, those of you that are charismatic, you're all right with the word Holy Ghost. It don't intimidate you. It don't frighten you because, you know, some of y'all got a background in, in, in ghosts and stuff. You know? <laughs> all right, we're going to get off that subject. So now we're going to talk about the operation and the gifts of the Spirit, but we're going to talk about them hermeneutically, exegetically. We're going to talk about them with the right interpretation or the attempt to rightly interpret, for instance, tongues. What did I say? What did I say? What did I say? Rightly interpreting tongues, right? And guess who's going to do that? Because if y'all looking to get the answer from the answer man, first of all, I'm not the answer man. You tell me that on uh, the word name. Dr. McLeod, I know you know this. No, and I know I'm going to put you on the path for you to get this. That's my part. Okay? You're not going to make me a, a, a mini god. Or you're not going to you're not going to be no, I'll not be guilty of that. I'm we're going to shift this thing. We're going to turn the table. It's your responsibility because the scripture says in 2 Timothy 2:15, study to show yourself approved on the God of workmen need not be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth. The implication there, the inference there is you study. Yeah. Tell somebody I'm the subject of that sentence. So you study to show yourself approved because Dr. McLeod is not going to be with you on Judgment Day when you have to give an account. Dr. McLeod is going to be with you when you have to give an account during your life, when opposition comes your way, when the uh, adverse circumstances of life come against you, when the enemy comes with uh, his adverse situations on your life. If you don't have the word of God well understood, you are going to be uh, meat to eat. Pray to be devoured, a rug to be trampled over, okay? So you, getting it is about survival for you. Tell somebody, i got to get this thing. And you're in an environment where you can get it. So give God another great big hand of applause today. So pneumatology, the study of the Holy Ghost, the study of the operation of the gifts of the Spirit and uh, some of the chapters that you want to study as we move along, you have a handout there, but some of the chapters you want to look at is St. John, of course, the 15th chapter, 14th chapter, 15th chapter, 16th chapter. Uh, also, 1 Corinthians, the 14th chapter, which is one of my favorite uh, texts as it relates to the gifts of the Spirit. I'm going to call it the hallmark of the gifts of the Spirit, 1 Corinthians 14. OK, we're going to spend some time with that and you're going to spend some time with First Corinthians 14, also First Corinthians 12. The other uh, book that you want to look at uh, to see the gifts of the spirit in its practical theology, in other words, in its practical setting, in its element, is the book of Acts or the Acts of the Apostles uh, or the action of the Apostles. And so you see the power of the Holy Spirit at work in the action of the Apostles. So again, we're looking at books that particularly underscore pneumatology, and that's John 14, John 15, John 16, 1 Corinthians 12, 1 Corinthians 14, and the entire book, uh, Action of the Apostles, all right? Okay, so your assignment uh, today, as you take it home, there is threefold. Your first assignment is to read these statements that we're going to go over a few of them today so that you'll understand how to approach the, the homework. Is to read these statements. Okay. <laughs> They're here somewhere. Uh huh. I love teaching this subject. I love teaching about the Holy Ghost. Um, it starts off with Holy Ghost and tongues. Okay. You guys have that hand out there? It should look something like this. And to those of the, you uh, honorary students that are paying attention by way of television or the internet, all you have to do is give us a call, 888-206-4344. The information should be there at the bottom of the screen. And just give us a call, and we'll embrace you. 
Uh, I'm mentoring 1,000 understudies this year. I'm mentoring through, um, <laughs> I'm mentoring through the um, internet and through my Facebook. I'm also mentoring by way of um, direct. I'm very systematic in my mentorship because everybody, Dr. McLeod, would you mentor me? And uh, you're gone in five days. <sighs> okay, you, if you want me to mentor you, is tell somebody it's going to take some time. Amen. I, I, I remember one apostle telling me, Dr. McLeod, uh, this guy wanted his, to get his ministry license to go into the prisons. And uh, I went to uh, his pastor and asked him, he said, well, let him walk with you for about two years. I said, I said, apostle, he wants, he wants to go into the prisons like tomorrow. He said, all right, let him walk with you for about a year. He was gone in six months. <laughs> okay. So uh, God mentored Adam in the cool of the day. He walked with God. Elijah in 2 Kings 2 mentored Elisha. He walked with him. And we see the results of him being truly mentored by a senior prophet, if you will. Because when that senior prophet graduated to glory, he released the mantle, if you will. And the miracles that the primary prophet exercised when he was here in the earth realm, the young prophet that walked with him, he didn't understand it all uh, in details, okay? But he saw the man of God smot the Jordan, and it parted hither and thither throughout. Are you understanding what I'm saying so far? Are you, ca are you catching this? So as he beheld the mannerism of the man of God in the miracle working dynamic, when the man of God was escorted and, uh, you know, heard pomp and circumstance, it was his turn to graduate. He went to another dimension of glory. So, point taken. When the man of God goes to another dimension of glory, you're supposed to go to the next dimension of glory yourself. Amen. So you should. So you should be warned. Don't hate. Tell, tell somebody. Don't hate. Amen. Celebrate <laughs> when the one that is mentoring you get escorted to the next dimension of functionality. Are y'all hearing me today? Yes. So he then, Elisha after his mentor, his father in the faith, was escorted to the heavens, to glory. Also went, didn't know what he was doing, but just smot the Jordan because he saw that's what, come on, tell somebody you gotta walk. And then you gotta tell somebody you gotta pay attention. Tell somebody you gotta observe. So if you're the one that is being mentored, don't do all the talk. Tell somebody don't do all the talk. Tell somebody shut up, if, you, if you're the one that's being mentored, just, you know, it's like me, uh, you know, uh, Pastor Jack Hayford, you all know, he just recently donated $25,000 to uh, the campaign and the mission of stomping out, you know, uh, biblical illiteracy. I just ran to somebody here recently, said, Dr. McLeod, you can't use that in every circle. Uh, I said, all right, well, some circles I'll say abolishing illiteracy or blotting out illiteracy. <laughs> okay, since we want to be technical about it. But, you know, Pastor Jack Hayford donated to that cause. There was a time that I was supposed to meet him, but two, three years ago, I met him, you know, because we, we used to meet and talk. I sat with him. He's a mentor to me. Amen. He's doing what I desire to do. Yes. He is over a college, King's College. He just picked up and moved, though, to Texas. He moved the whole thing to Texas. And so something very revelatory and something very kingdom uh, related took place 15 was that the 15th of August there, 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 there was a delegation there was a transfer there was the passing of the baton and if you guys will pay attention and watch the video you understand what I'm saying but when I was privileged to sit with Pastor Jack Hayford do you know what I did I sat there and I kept my mouth shut why because I'm not going to try to come and try to sell him my resume. 
I'm not going to try to sell him my credentials. By the mere fact that I'm privileged to sit there with him, he already has bought into my resume and my credential. Don't get me wrong. There are times that you need, you know, David had to sell his credentials to Saul. He said he only had two items on his resume. I killed a lion, I killed a bear, Saul. That's, that's all I got. I got two points on my resume. Okay? So there are times that you got to sell your resume, but there are times you got to shut up and take the download. Take the impartation. Take the deposit. Because God is doing something in the supernatural that your finite mind cannot fathom. It's a caught thing in situations. Tell somebody, it's a caught thing. So that means you can't intellectualize it. That means your cerebral don't come up to par. You have to let the supernatural be at work. If you're in agreement with that, give God a great big hand of applause. I don't know how, what this got to do with pneumatology, Dr. Taylor, but the Holy Ghost just took me. Well, the Holy Ghost. He took me there. The Holy Ghost took me there. He, he ushered me there. He massaged me there. He wooed me there. He unctionized me there. Okay, so this assignment here says Holy Ghost in tongues. And one of the things I want to point out right at the top, it says why we should speak in tongues. But I did this with my Gardena group yesterday. I'm like, you know, that's a misprint. Because I should not be imposing upon you that you need to speak in tongues. It is my responsibility as a professor to disseminate information objectively, not subjectively or biasly. I'm not going to give you my belief system. It is not my responsibility to shove down your throat my doctrinal philosophy or point of view. You are superior thinkers, and that's part of our mission objective, is to check off that box to turn you into superior thinkers. That means you could think independent of the influences of those people that are around you. That's a good time right there to give God a great big hand of applause. That was a good time. Y'all missed that. Independent thinkers. So I can't say to you that you're supposed to speak in tongues. They'll say it in your church, and they'll say it in your doctrinal class, and they'll say it in your Sunday school, but tell somebody you in Bible college. Come on, tell somebody you in Bible college. Come on, tell somebody again you in Bible college. So you are a representation and an independent entity of Next Dimension University when you leave this campus. So part of that is don't try to argue people down because they have a, an, an opposing point of view. They can have an opposing thought, opposing school of thought, an opposing point of view because is their right to. Freedom of expressions, freedom of speech. Don't get mad with them because they don't believe the way you believe. Okay? Likewise in Next Dimension University, I can't say that you are supposed to speak in tongues. I want you to get that for yourself through much diligence, through much study. And I'm going to put you on the path to studying this particular subject. Now, when we talk about tongues, there are other tongues. There are unknown tongues. There are private tongues. There are public tongues. There's praying in the spirit. There's tongues for intercession. There are new tongues. So we got to be careful, you guys, Pentecostals, Protestant folks, charismatic folks that say, you know what? You ought to speak in tongues according to Acts 2 and 4 when you get filled with the Holy Ghost. Because if that be the case, if you will, I'll be using a lot of those disclaimers, you guys, if you will. That means I don't corner the market on the information. I don't monopolize the information on this subject, but I'm making a proposal to you. Everybody say, I'm making a proposal. So my proposal, based on my research and my hermeneutical approach to this text and this subject matter in particular, when we say that people ought to speak in tongues, according to Acts 2 and 4. If it's according to Acts 2 and 4, everybody 
ought to be speaking in not an unknown tongue, but an other tongue. So every time you supposedly an individual get filled with the Holy Ghost, they need to be either speaking in Greek, Spanish, other tongue, a known tongue. Everybody say a known tongue. So if we propose and we have the thesis that when you get filled with the Holy Ghost, you need to speak in an unknown tongue. Don't use Acts 2 and 4 as your reference point. That's all I'm, that's all I'm saying. And I'm submitting that for your hermeneutical approv approv approval. I'm submitting that to you. Is that all right, everybody? Uh, nah, I, I, I know you say, what in the world is Dr. McLeod talking about? <laughs> Tell you what I'm talking about. Like I said previously, if you don't get the verbiage, if you don't get the glossary, if you don't get the terminology, if you don't get the phraseology, if, it, if I'm talking crazy to you, if I'm talking in another language to you, you will get the concept. <laughs> you will get the concept. And the concept is if I'm going to speak in tongues, according to Acts 2 and 4, then I'm going to be speaking in other tongues and not unknown tongues. So let's look at that. Let's look at that because that's part of your assignment. You're also going to look at Jude. Jude 20, where it says, building yourself in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Anybody know what praying in the Holy Ghost is? Yeah. Lift your hand if you know what praying in the Holy Ghost is. Put your hands down. Lift your hand if you do not know what praying in the Holy Ghost is. That's okay. Don't do, Lift your hand if you do not know. Okay, one, two, three, four. Okay. We have, so everybody in the house is not Pentecostal. Everybody in the house is not charismatic. Now, see, we, when we talk about being charismatic, you guys, we talk about being charismatic. Charismatic, you know, the word charism, right? That means grace, right? Grace. Then you have charismata. That's gifts. Then you have charismatic. That's those that are under the influence of those gifts. So we talk about, oh, he is so charismatic. That, you know, that's really a misnomer. We're applying that term to the wrong demonstration. Because <laughs> everybody that come up here and uses, you know, uh, they're exhibitionists or sensationalists or they know how to smooth the crowd and know how to work the crowd, Dr. McLeod. That's your problem. You don't know how to work the crowd. That's your problem, Dr. McLeod. You don't know how to play on the emotions of the people. That's why God got me teaching. Because I can't get into those antics, tactics, vices, and devices. Are you hearing me today? I don't uh, That's a miscarriage of fairness to your time to the value of your time, to the value of your ear gate, to the value of your soul to get up here and try to manipulate, maneuver, and manufacture. That's sorcery. You're using a power that's not the power of the Holy Ghost to get your stuff done. That's sorcery. Acts 8, study it out. Okay, but charismatic don't mean someone that knows how to work the crowd. Okay? Charismatic is one that is under the influence of the Holy Ghost and the grace gifts. Everybody say the grace gifts. Grace. Come on, say the grace gifts. Grace. Okay, now there's several grace gifts. There are gubernatorial grace gifts that are mentioned in Ephesians 4, 11, and 12. Apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. Those are gubernatorial grace gifts. Those particular officers are governing the affairs of the body of Christ. Apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. They're governing the primary affairs of the body of Christ. That's why they got to have their act together. And we can go into, I mean, you'll have classes on fivefold operation. Then there's other grace gifts mentioned in uh, 1 Corinthians 12. And they are broken up into three categories. They are broken up into three categories. So you, you talk about gifts of utterance, prophecy, you know, tongues and interpretation of tongues. Gifts of utterance, okay? gifts of utterance. Then you have the second compartment are called the gifts that discern or revelatory gifts, gifts that discern. And you guys know that discerning of spirit, word of knowledge, word of wisdom. Then you have the power 
uh, category, you know, working of miracles, healing, and faith, all right? And you're going to be responsible because you're going to get two books. The one book is uh, Good Morning, Holy Spirit by Benny Hinn, and you're responsible for a book report on that uh, bestseller, Good Morning, Holy Spirit by Benny Hinn. The second book is the Kenneth Hagin book on the gifts of the Spirit, and you'll be responsible for doing a synopsis on each one of the gifts of the Spirit, okay? If you have a question as to Dr. McLeod, what are you talking about when you talk about a synopsis? That's talking about is basically a summary or a report, an elaboration, a commentary on those specific gifts. And uh, your, your, um, the way we're going to be grading those is in, indicated there on your handout. If you don't have that handout, you'll get that handout that has to do with the grading approach, okay? All right. But most of all, uh, like, you know, some of our most strict teachers here, like Dr. Luke, you know, Dr. Moore, she's not here right now, uh, Dr. Taylor, you know, Dr. Becker, they're strict. I'm not that strict, okay? I'm, I'm the easiest teacher on campus. Turn to your neighbor and say, Dr. McLeod is the easiest teacher on campus, the easiest professor on campus. I told you to say, so go on, say it. Come on, be obedient. <laughs> Obedient is better than sacrifice. <laughs> Obedience is better than sacrifice. I don't know where that's at in the Bible. Is that in the Bible somewhere? I think it's in the Bible. <laughs> All right. So basically, I just don't want you to regurgitate the information to pass the test at the end, you guys. That's not my deal. Okay. My deal is to make sure you get stuff conceptually and that in the end, your character changes. Okay. You, you get 100% on a test and fail in life. And I'd rather you fail on the test. No, I can't. Dr. Taylor won't allow me to allow you to fail on the test. But I want you to, to put the value where it belongs. How in the world are you going to be a theologian and you cuss like a sailor? How in the world are you going to be the smartest dude in hermeneutics, but you can't keep your genitals in your, in your pants? How in the world are you going to be the smartest or the sharpest uh, uh, knife in the kitchen drawer, if you will, but you can't, you know, you, but you have an attitude issues. You, you know, you have explosions. You got anger issues. You still get anger therapy. Tell somebody there's something wrong with that picture. In the world, you're going to come into next dimension and eat up all this food and go out and act a fool. Are oh, y'all hearing me today? So it's about conversion to me. It's about conversion. You know why I'm hard on you? Because I'm hard on myself. Hard on you because I'm hard on myself. And, it, you know, it, when I'm pointing one finger at you, I got four coming back to me. So this is an indictment on me. I'm preaching to me. Y'all just getting the kibbles and bits, the leftovers. All right? So bottom line here, Holy Ghost, back to uh, closing this out. So when we talk about, all right, so the, with, the, uh, with the book report, that's what, I gave you guys the assignment there. You guys got the assignment clear. Let's just go over number one. The number one assignment has to do with these, these lists, these points right here. Like, for instance, where it says, it is a gift. Talking about the Holy Ghost. It is a gift. You have to do a synopsis on that. Okay? Where it says, evidence of infilling tongues. Take that reference. It's right there, Acts 10, 44, and 46. You You'd study the reference. Uh, and you elaborate. You give your commentary. You're the smart person. You're the commentator. I get tired of you guys going out and buying commentaries. That's all right. That's a secondary resource. But you start becoming the commentary. You start engaging yourself. Okay? And I want to see how you engage your revelation. I want to see how you engage your hermeneutics. I want to see how you engage your understanding of the text. All right? Uh, number three, speaking in your heavenly language is not the same as having the gift of tongues. So everybody that have the gift of tongues, everybody, everybody is privileged to speak in their heavenly language, but everybody do not have the gift of tongues. See, we're going to help you understand that, or are you going to help you understand that through your research? Number four, speaking in your heavenly language will help you to consecrate yourself and stir up God's presence within you. There are other evidence that you have been filled. Isn't that right? Because people get filled with the Holy Ghost but can't love. People get filled with the Holy Ghost ain't got no faith. People get filled with the Holy Ghost have no patience. People get, really? Really? You're going to call just speaking in tongues as indication that you've been filled? We need to look at that, revisit that, you guys. Last one, God is not 
evil nor wicked. If you ask, it, he will give it to you. So if you ask for the Holy Ghost, he will give it to you. So today that concludes our lesson on pneumatology or the hermeneutics of pneumatology, the hermeneutics of pneumatology. Today was just an introduction. Just want to whet your appetite, stimulate your dentrites, and get you going. Get you going because you've got to stir this pot, okay? you got to go home now, look at this stuff that Dr. McLeod gave you guys, and you've got to get in the grind. Tell somebody, i got to get in the kingdom grind right now. i got to get in the grind. That's what it says, study to show yourself. The word study there implies in Greek to be diligent. And you can't be diligent and be lazy at the same time. So when it comes to studying this Bible, there's no, no lazy application submitted. Okay? you got to be about it. Tell somebody, I'm going to be on my kingdom grind. In Jesus' name. Well, God bless you to all of you that participated with us here at Next Dimension University and the School of Destiny telecast. We invite you to come on board with this new breed that's emerging in this last hour as we are eradicating biblical illiteracy globally and preparing master teachers for end time deployment. God is summonsing you, man of God. You declare yourself as a prophet, a pastor. You declare yourself as an apostle. Well, make sure if you will that you are not a functional illiterate biblically and get on board and know your stuff we're here to make sure and to ensure that you are polished and proficient in the academics of the text so know your stuff because we're in an information society nowadays and they can know if you know what you're talking about people will know what you're talking they'll know what you're talking about they'll just go right to google they have their little iphones and they'll check you out right then and there so tell your neighbor we got to know what we're talking about and I know we pray that we know what we're talking about, and we want you to be on board with this campaign of stomping out biblical illiteracy. So we love you, and so, friend of mine, till the next occasion, we grant you Godspeed. God will bless you. God will keep you as we together continue to strive for the masteries that are in Christ Jesus, our Lord. God bless you. Give God a great big hand of applause. is to have them with us tonight. Phil and Brenda Nicholas, come on, everybody, big shout amen for the Nicholas family as they come now to bless us in song at this 2015 commencement ceremony. God bless you, sir. Can you say praise the Lord? Oh, come on, can you say praise the Lord? Is God good to you? Has God been good to you? Now, y'all, I, I don't know. We was going to go one way. Oh, somebody's excited about Jesus. Amen. 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 Yo, you know, uh, first of all, congratulations to the graduating class and all the honorees. Um, we, 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 we were recording for a while. Some people know who we are, but we've stopped for a while because our son, we had a special needs son. Our son, PJ, was born Down syndrome and autistic. And uh, sometimes, y'all, you got to stop everything and take care of home first. Somebody know what I'm talking about in here? Amen. 
So, so we hadn't recorded for a while. So, so um, we Pete Day's 24 now, and, and we're excited. So we're back. We did an album. So our daughter said, "Now, Dad, when y'all come back, y'all can't come back on the cane and the walker and everything. Y'all got to come back hitting." So, so we we she got her. We got her involved. So, so this little song. So we're gonna do this song for you. And you know, it's good. You know, there's a lot of times these songs, y'all, these secular songs, y'all. There's songs that that they write. But sometimes I hear some of those songs, I say, you know what? If that song was giving God some praise, that'd be a whole different thing. So, so we, we grab one of them songs and going to give God praise. Number one, my brother up there, we're we going to give God praise on one of them songs. It should have been like this in the first place. Listen. <laughs> to me in my life. Listen, let me tell you about this. Third verse, here we go. Sing. If you need protection, he can give you shelter. He will be your life. When the storm is raging, the storm is raging. And he 